More Thank you, Bob. Know. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, make sure that audio and video is working. Uh, can you see my screen and hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Well, uh, thanks again, uh, Bob. As uh, I said, my name is uh, Leon Gorbati. I'm Director of Product Management uh, for Bentley Systems. I'm also the um, sort of inventor and original architect of uh, this technology with a firm that I founded. Uh, we joined Bentley Systems uh, towards the end of uh, 2012. In fact, uh, pre-Bentley we had a Fiat Tech webinar and uh, some of this might be a little bit of a repeat uh, because this whole idea really started with uh, Fiat Tech and a, and a Fiat Tech project. Um, but but um, things have moved on uh, a little bit. Uh, we're also featuring an integration with uh, Bentley's ProjectWise system. So um, I will uh, introduce uh, SpecWave Composer and talk about the wonderful world of codes, standards, and engineering specifications. Uh, a little bit about Bentley. You are uh, probably familiar with us. Uh, we are a software company in the AEC and other engineering uh, verticals. Uh, Interesting fact is 85% of ENR's combined top 626 design firms are actually uh, Bentley users. We enable some of the world's largest infrastructure projects. And if you're interested in learning more about Bentley systems, please visit us at www.bentley.com. So uh, talking about um, code standards and engineering specifications, and unfortunately we will start with what happens when they go wrong. And the answer is a whole lot of really bad things, uh, potentially. In fact, it is my understanding that um, in the unfortunate incident uh, or accident uh, or catastrophe when the design basis is being investigated, that engineering specifications supersede the drawings. A lot of people actually don't realize, a lot of people think that uh, you've submitted a drawing, you've signed off on the drawing, and that's the basis for design. It, and it is my understanding that if the spec says something different, that's what's supposed to govern. And in today's world, unfortunately, specs are done in a whole lot of different ways. There really isn't a standard approach. They're created with generic applications. There's a lot of time that goes into just word processing and formatting and cleaning up documents. Managing change is difficult. It is error prone. It is difficult, difficult to filter and aggregate for consumption. Specification documents in themselves and especially entire libraries can be very voluminous. Sometimes you have inherent contradictions and overall the world of code standards and specifications is tremendously inefficient um, t t today. When the stories are frequently tell, which is a true one, I have a friend who is an inspector in the power industry. He confided in me one day, he said, you know, I don't read specs anymore. Anytime I'm scheduled for a major inspection, I get a thousand pages of PDFs the night before that I'm supposed to verify compliance against and it's just literally impossible. So I just don't even read them. I, have 30 years of experience, I go in, if it looks right, I pass it, if it looks wrong, it fails. And I told this story once at a presentation to a group of lead engineers, and somebody brought their fist down the table and proclaimed that this is unacceptable. Um, and, and so this is where the whole concept of um, spec wave and a better approach to codes, standards, and engineering specifications. This is a dedicated toolkit for authoring, for managing, and for consuming in the field. So the solution is SpecWave Composer. We're also introducing, introducing a new term which is called spec modeling. I frequently like to say that this introduces engineering rigor to documents in a similar manner that CAD once did for engineering drawings. Now you can intelligently create specs, control, and ultimately comply with engineering specifications. So SpecWave Composer advantages, uh, streamline specifying, concentrate spec compliance, and extend spec accuracy. Streamline specifying talks about intelligent creation and repurposing. We also call this uh, multi-purposing and I'll be uh, talking about this a little bit more and also demonstrating it in the app itself. But this is about automatically conduct some key tasks instead of manually obviously. Um, improve compliance, create once, reuse many times, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, better be able to maintain and enforce st standards and allow people to focus on their core competencies. This really allows professional architects and engineers to be just that and not have to also be professional document editors. Extend spec accuracy. We are now completely integrated with Bentley ProjectWise. I will mention uh, that SpecWave is 
essentially a standalone desktop application. It can be used in the absence of ProjectWise as well. In fact, our file format, uh, which is called SpecX, I'll be talking about that uh, more in a FiaTech context towards the end of the presentation. Uh, but SpecX is really just a file on disk. Uh, you could use Documentum or FileNet or just your C drive. Uh, of course, uh, we feel that uh, ProjectWise is uh, the best uh, engineering document management system out there. We do have an integration between SpecWave and ProjectWise, and uh, this will ensure that all parts parties are on the same page and now you can share your design files and also specifications in the same environment in the same kind of way and oh by the way uh, connect and in it, interlink uh, documents and drawings. So I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, demonstration when discuss some of the uh, key features of the product and uh, first and foremost is strict document quality and enforcement. SpecWave Composer locks down document style and structure and it enforces the quality of the documents. It is now impossible to accidentally or inadvertently break documents, corrupt documents, lose the numbering and so on. This substantially alleviates the burden of document formatting and focuses on ease of use for the subject matter expert. So with that, I'm going to uh, switch to the SpecWave application. I'm going to give you a little bit uh, of a general overview and then uh, talk about some of the specific features uh, that we're working on. So um, SpecWave, for all intents and purposes, is a modern-day word processing application. It has to be. We uh, export and import to other familiar word processing applications. Um, we support uh, graphics, embedded images, and so on. But the key difference is is that everything is objectized and everything is explicitly held in structure. So when you look at the tree control or document map, the nested hierarchy of this is actually exactly the underlying XML representation of the document itself. This is quite different than, uh, than Microsoft Word, for example. Furthermore, if we go to the text area, you can see that practically everything in the document is an object. One way to look at it is maybe as a hybrid of Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel. You have the top-down narrative structure of a document, but everything is essentially a logical cell. And as a logical cell, it, it can have its own uh, properties, attributes, and purposes. And here's where we get into the properties pane over towards the right side of the application. You can see that this set of properties are object-specific. As I switch different to different objects, um, they will have different properties. Some of these general properties are actually delivered by the system. We call them the identification properties, such as when the object was created, by whom, when it was modified. This really works well for audit trail for these uh, very important documents. The all-important object ID, which is unique and uh, can be used to track the evolution of uh, paragraphs and objects and also for uh, linking and inter interoperability with other applications. And then the rest of the stuff that you see I'll be introducing as part of this presentation, this is not delivered off the shelf. This is something that you or your organization can define for your documents and uh, your, envir your environment. But again, generally speaking, this is a desktop application. It has an extremely easy install. There's practically uh, no overhead to it. We have a very extensive help system um, so that uh, the learning curve and uh, the ability to get started with the product is actually uh, very, very straightforward. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, multi-purpose doc documents. So we're also, we also refer to this as persona-driven views. SpecWave Composer features the ability to reduce duplication of content by allowing infinite repurposing for different uses or user. Some real classic users would be to uh, combine documents for design bid uh, build versus design build in the AEC in the construction world or having a distinction between what's part of a core engineering standard or set of practices versus site specific addenda. Um, you can have multiple business units. Uh, for example, we frequently talk to organizations that uh, say, you know, why do we have two different pump specs in our power group and our uh, process plant group? Uh, why can't we just combine our know-how for uh, uh, specifying and, in and installing pumps? So this is exactly the kind of application. It also works for geographical variants such as uh, if you have some uh, state specific or locale specific legalese in a document that are only applicable to a certain environment or if you have um, 
uh, certain variants for Europe versus North America or tropicalization versus winterization. So now you don't have to do a save as and slightly modified document. You can work right on the same master document and that really allows gives you a lot of efficiency in terms of maintenance and also the reduction of proofreading and editing on projects. So I will demonstrate this in the application. You'll see that this uh, precast structural concrete document um, was actually uh, via template definition was defined to support multipurposing for business group, uh, for language, here we have English and Spanish side by side, for a certain version of, uh, master, of CSI master format and certain, and certain projects. And uh, before I show you this, I'm going to show you just a little bit about templates. Um, so here's a specific uh, user template and we tell you that the file that you're editing is a template, not a final docu document. Um, so in, in the templates, you'll go into style definitions, and here's where this organization defined every kind of object that is legal in the document. They defined a numbered structure hierarchy, as well as anything else that can appear in the document, and that's it. There's, that's all that you can do. That you can do. It is possible to change it, and I'm going to talk about that in, in, in a little bit, uh, but one thing I want to point out, here is that if you are somebody that is familiar with style definitions in Microsoft Word, this should be fairly straightforward. Typically, you'd get started by picking your favorite template, for lack of a better word, or, or typical document, and essentially creating the uh, character font definitions, the paragraph numbering and indentation, and you can essentially get documents in SpecWave to look exactly like you want them in Microsoft Word, but without the ability to introduce any corruption, double indentation, or misnumbering, or anything along those lines. Uh, here's another example of a, temp of a template that I called uh, a basic plant template. Uh, this provides some uh, s some uh, seed uh, structure if this template is used for new documents. And when you go into the style definitions of that, it uses a different methodology than the previous user template, which was essentially a CSI compliant uh, t template. So you can create these templates as you need to. You can have uh, master templates and project templates. You can have corporate templates and uh, contractor templates and, um, and and so on. Um, so back to uh, one thing I'll, I'll mention there is um, if, when you go to a document and if you do a file export, you, we can export to PDF, we can uh, export to Microsoft Word. When we export to Word, you get the document looking exactly the way that you expect, all of the numbering is dynamic um, and so on. And you can also export to another SpecX file. Why would you want to do that, you might ask. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is um, when I show you the multipurposing in just a minute, uh, you, you can uh, export only a certain purpose where all of the other purposes will be physically stripped out. As I mentioned before, this is an open and interoperable uh, standard, so anybody with WinZip and Notepad can essentially get into the underlying mechanics. So if you wanted to strip out the stuff that's out of context, you can, but also if you wanted to do a template transformation. So as, as I mentioned, um, we really uh, separate content from presentation, and SpecWave has a great ability to completely transform a document to a different style and structure. You're not locked in concrete, so pun intended. Uh, it just requires an extra manual step. So if you wanted to go from part 1 to 1.0 or to ABC or whatever, you could just create a different template and you do an export to a SpecX file via template transformation and the document or multiple documents are transformed seamlessly. This is actually a unique uh, SpecWave advantage. So with that, back to the multi purposing demonstration, this, this document was decorated for um, several multi-purposes, and at the end of the day, it simply boils down to setting the active view filter control. So we will say that now we're going to go to a specific uh, purpose or context or project, and this is going to be our transportation uh, business group. Uh, this uh, this uh, project is uh, being done in American English. Um, we are using uh, the 2004 version of uh, master format. Uh, this is going to be a design bid build project. Um, we're going to hide all notes to specifier and uh, this document was actually multi-purpose for both imperial and metric units. Uh, we'll say that uh, we'll, we'll select the imperial option and the first thing that we will show you is everything that is logically excluded for the current 
purpose. And if you turn off show exclusions, then the document will completely renumber, restructure, and is now ready to, you, you can export it as a PDF, as a frozen deliverable uh, for a certain uh, purpose at this time. So at the end of the day, multipurposing is actually uh, quite simple, um, but it's uh, very powerful because it reduces a lot of editing and proofreading and allows you to reduce duplication of content. So again, very um, very uh, uh, powerful feature. Um, and, and the way that you define it, I'm going to quickly jump into the uh, template definition again, is you, you have to go into the tag definitions and you, your organization, defines how you want the multipurpose documents. You can give it the, the business group that you have, the languages that you want to support, the project types that you want to do, um, and, and so on. So once you've defined the template, then all documents that are based on that template can be easily multipurposed simply via a touch of, a, of, of the mouse. So that's uh, multipurposing in a nutshell. Next thing I want to talk about is spec-driven process. So we recognize that specifications are by definition meant to be exchanged among different organizations and they're also as the core most critical documents on any project, they're always riding along with various processes and business activities such as uh, procurement, inspection, and so on. In the past, there's been a lot various documents and schedules such as a vendor data information requirement or an inspection and test plan and ITP that are developed uh, via a spreadsheet or an addendum, a separate document. There's copy and paste involved, which means that if the main document changes, you, you tend to have some uh, disynchronization uh, there. So we've come up with the ability to lever leverage the template definition and the tagging to enable some of these spec-related processes and uh, we've provided direct support for some of these areas that I've listed here. So to show you how this works in practice, I'm going to go into an actual uh, um, very large specification that's, uh, for, uh, that's used for design of a chip handling system and I'm going to go into the active view of the workflow of inspection schedule for example. And uh, here is essentially an ITP that lists out uh, what needs to be inspected, what the witness, uh, who has to witness it, uh, what's the milestone, and so on. The point here being is that this is just a view. This is not a separate document. It was not created via co via copy. So, and when I actually select an object in here and I switch back to the master document. Here is that object, that cell, that provided the entry into the inspection and test plan. The really powerful thing about this is, again, I mean, the, the obvious point of lack of disk synchronization, if the spec changes, so does the ITP immediately, but the engineer, when he or she has the content and context of this paragraph in mind, they can just simply touch it and be communicating with the inspector, be communicating with the procurement department right there on the object itself. And if the object is out of context due to multipurposing, then its entry disappears from the subsequent schedule or list. So you don't have stale entries sitting around, something that typically happens when you start with uh, a sample from a previous project and then begin to edit it for this project. It really uh, provides you with a toolkit to uh, do a lot more with the document uh, than, than just write it. So um, in a nutshell, that's the concept of uh, spec-driven process. and uh, we we support that for uh, um, ITPs, uh, submittals, and vendor data requirements. Also for iterating comments, exceptions, and clarifications to specifications to vendors, suppliers, subcontractors, and so on. And uh, overlays and exception specs, which are used uh, in the process industry. Talk a little bit about uh, revision management in SpecWave Composer. We support the familiar <clears throat> excuse me concept of change tracking, but we also go above and beyond that to allow multiple snapshots of the document at any state for any reason and that would typically be 30% uh, complete, 60% complete or uh, pending uh, discipline lead review or uh, FEL1, FEL2, FEL3 and so, and, and, and so on. The nice thing about the way that we implemented it is that the snapshots are actually stored in the SpecX file itself so that there are multiple files of disk. You can actually essentially just work with the document at hand and we provide some really nice tools for being able to evaluate um, these differences. So I will go back to the precast structural concrete spec, go into review. Uh, manage, manage revision. You can see you've got your typical track changes um, 
options as well. Uh, but it, all that track changes does is it, it, it introduces a concept of a session at the end of which it'll take a snapshot of a revision. So here are the revisions that I created for demonstration purposes in this document. I named one arbitrarily first milestone. I will select that and I will compare the first milestone to second milestone. And what we call the spec diff, which stands for specification differencing window, will come up. And you can see here on the left, you have the first milestone, you have the second milestone, and uh, this document document basically had one paragraph deleted and then uh, downstream of that the paragraphs renumbered. So you can do, you can take um, snapshots of document for audit trail and just for uh, uh, just being able to see who changed what and when and, ha when and how. And uh, we also support multi-file compare. So as long as you have a couple of directories or data sources, they have equally named files, you can use multi-file compare where we will actually find all the files that are different and show you the differences in the spectif window. And this can be very powerful to, to comparing an entire project set of specifications back to the master to see how the project has changed so you can bring some lessons learned back into the master, for example, um, or if you subscribe to industry content such as master spec or something like that and you maintain a set of in-house uh, specifications, then you can use um, the multi-file compare feature to see what's changed uh, in successive publishings and be able to update your master specifications that much easier and, and, and quicker. So again, another spec wave advantage in terms of the uh, named snapshots and uh, re revision management. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, mass load in advanced search. Um, I mentioned that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that we separate content from presentation and this really leads to a very robust environment where we can open hundreds and even thousands of files all at once. I'll be pointing out the little case study towards the end of the pre pre presentation, but the point here is that you can really work with a lot of documents, you can work with an entire library all at the, all at the same time. So here I actually have one, one tab here that is uh, uh, that has about 30 documents open all at once. Um, this is the same. We could have opened uh, these documents in individual tabs, uh, but that would really require a lot of graphics. So we do this as part of when you go to open, you can open in single file mode or you can open in multi -file, multiple files where you can even grab an entire directory or recursively an entire directory, directory tree. And once you're working in a multi-document environment, what really comes into play is the advanced search. Is the advanced search. In, in search, you can search by text as you traditionally would, but you can also search by any of the tags that were used for multi-purposing or spec-driven process. So if you want to find everything that was uh, related to welding or everything that was, uh, you want to find all of your inspection requirements across multiple documents, um, you can really do that here. Um, I'll quickly demonstrate, I'll put in something like ASME, ASME capital, and here I found 21 hits on ASME. You can see that they're coming from three different documents. If I select one of the results in here, then that object will be automatically selected in the text area in the background, but the search interface it's itself, it's it, it's kind of uh, spreadsheet-like, so uh, you can open up multiple columns, so you can group and sort based on certain criteria. Um, you can also even, uh, you, you can't edit the body text, but you can still edit all of the attributes uh, for any object. You can also do that for multiple object selection all at once. Uh, so it's a very powerful toolkit for the person that's responsible for a spec library in terms of being able to work with a large amount of data, be able to find the proverbial needle in the haystack, or uh, do what, what you need to do across multiple documents and entire libraries all, all at once. So uh, that talks about uh, mass load and advanced search. Now I'm going to talk about the uh, SpecWave ProjectWise integration. So ProjectWise is a document management system. It is optimized for engineering organizations. Most of the large enough firms use ProjectWise. <clears throat> and SpecWave, when you install SpecWave, you have the option to install the ProjectWise integration, which will give you bidirectional attribute exchange. And uh, you can do things such as multipurpose based on information that's coming from ProjectWise and uh, support certain approval workflows and publishing, uh, such as iterating documents through subject matter experts and so, and so on. And this also comes into 
play through the tag definition. So I'll go to this user template again and go into the tag definitions. And here, instead of selecting all objects within a file, which we did for multipurposing, we will select the file object itself. And that has a certain set of properties listed. You can see the properties can be choices, they can be strings, they can be numbers. But in this case, these attributes are applicable to the document at the file level and they're also the same attributes that are used by this organization in a project-wise environment and uh, as part of the integration you're able to um, to uh, do an update either from SpecWave to project-wise or from project-wise down to SpecWave. So um, again, we think that for organizations that already use project-wise, um, we've seen some organizations that keep their engineering drawings um, in, in project-wise, but they keep specs in some other systems. So you know, the story here is really why have two different systems. You can now keep your engineering specifications and drawings in the same system, and it, it works uh, very well. So the benefits are reduced risk, reduced time spent, and improved quality, some key uh, value propositions that we're offering for some of the most important critical documents on any project. Talk a little bit about, bit of a case study. And a gentleman from uh, CDM Smith who used SpecWave to completely reformat and transform a spec library of about 990 documents, so that's a thousand documents, and this particular individual was actually able to work with the entire library on a fairly outdated uh, Windows NT laptop, 32-bit, uh, a few years old. He was able to uh, open up a uh, thousand files and um, everything worked in a uh, very performantly. So, uh, and, and you can see the comments that have come back uh, from the from the users. Uh, so it's really quite if you're if you if you've got a complicated spec or structured document task, SpecWave can really do a lot of automation and provide a tremendous amount of value. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the SpecX uh, file format. Uh, so at the end of the day, I mentioned that SpecWave is just a desktop application. Our persistence or our saving mechanism is just a file on disk. It's just like a PDF or a docx file. In fact, it's very much like a docx file. It is compliant to open packaging conventions, uh, which is an open standard that was originally introduced by, by Microsoft. But it is optimized for engineering specifications in terms of the spec modeling that we do. This uh, started out in Fiatech, um, and uh, this, this was all, always about uh, non-proprietary, open interoperability, interoperability uh, suggestion for engineering specifications. Since the Bentley acquisition, we are completely committed to uh, maintaining that. In fact, we are currently. Uh, trying to get going a new FIATEC project, which we're calling Spec Modeling Collaboration, or uh, the acronym SMC, and uh, we are currently looking for participation. So if you're interested, uh, here's a list of the various key points uh, um, of leadership that you can contact, and uh, we'd be very much happy to uh, have you in this project. Uh, we're going to be further developing the schemas that uh, are part of the SpecX file format, uh, hopefully introducing some common meta language so that an inspection requirement is an inspection requirement in different in, in different areas in different industries in the same, in the same way, and uh, so on. Really moving towards uh, true interoperability and harmonization for these most important documents in the capital facilities industry. Um, so with that, that's my presentation. I was shooting for about 30 minutes. Looks like I'm right on. And I'll open it up for questions at this time. Bob, thank you very much. Thank you, Leon. Uh, do we have any questions out there? Uh, I, I have not seen any typed in. You can type those in at this time. We do have, and Leon, we now have the poll uh, system working. We do have a series of questions for you all that uh, uh, in lieu of a question coming in that we'd like to uh, try a, an experiment, we uh, have opened a, a the ability to do a polling uh, of all of our attendees, and we have about 52 of you out there at this stage. So I'm going to launch, uh, while some of you think about whether or not you have any questions for Leon, I'm going to try and launch the, uh, the first of these, uh, these questions, and we'll see how they work automatically. So you should be seeing that this is our poll, uh, and you can uh, click on uh, online, uh, and we'll be giving you the immediate uh, 
calculations of the answers uh, as you come in. Um, of course, the organizers and panelists are not going to vote. Uh, but uh, the first one is, do you see the need for spec interoperability with design tools and other uh, project workflows? Uh, and then and just select one of these in, in which uh, uh, you see the, uh, the answer. Of course, you can select all three, all of the above. So if you will go ahead and uh, begin to fill that out, uh, that would be great. And we'll, uh, we'll then close that, uh, that answer. And I now have, uh, well, we've been, we'll leave this open for a few more of you to vote. I've got half of you voted. And uh, as you know, we're recording this. this. All of this will be up on the Theotech website shortly. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to see the answers to these polling questions as well. I'm going to leave this open for a couple more minutes. We're up to 65% of those. On the call voting. Couple more. And uh, you should be seeing the poll in progress. Two more coming in. Three quarters of you. Okay, that seems to be about as many of you are, are going to respond. Eh, we have one more coming in. Uh, with about 80% of you in, 17% are saying uh, CAD programs. Uh, none are saying procurement systems. 14% uh, have said construction and commissioning, and 69% have said uh, all of the above. So uh, thank you. And we'll go to uh, the next poll. And let's go to the next poll question while people are now there's the there's the summary of the voting with eighty two percent coming in. And let's see if I can get the next poll to work. And let's see if we have any questions coming in at the meantime. Leon, do you have any comments on the poll? I can't see it. That I haven't figured out how to see it. I think I'm still screen sharing here. Okay, you should be seeing. We should be seeing your. I'm seeing your screen. Uh, yeah, Maybe I should stop uh, sharing. Um, screen sharing. It's up at the top. Okay, now I can see. Yeah, I can see the viewer now. Okay. But you should be seeing the screen, the uh, screen with the results. Yeah, I just see the first question still. Okay.
Well, let's go. Let's go to the. Uh, see if there are any questions. And I'm going to give you control back, Liam, while I do the questions here, because it may uh, someone may want to see uh, some part of your presentation as we handle the questions. You're going to have to make me presenter again. You should be seeing your screen. I did shift you over, Leon. Okay, it hasn't updated yet. In the interim, you may be seeing the uh, the summary, but let me read the questions as I have them here, because we do have some questions that are coming in the interim. The spec wave expose objects and attributes to link with BIM process plant modeling. Yes, that, we're actually working on that right now as part of our technology roadmap for spec wave under Bentley. We are um, planning to connect specs with building information models in a bi-directional way so you can generate specs from models and vice versa. We've had uh, several proof of concepts that have uh, been pretty well accepted. So right now we do not deliver anything that specifically integrates with our tools or you know or, or other tools, but that's very much on our short-term uh, technology roadmap is to integrate with uh, Bentley Ecosystem Building Designer and uh, various other design tools. Okay. Another question: Do you also deal with design standards such as AEC, ASCE, AISC, and ACI standards? It, it's quite a complicated. Um, question, most industry standards, um, they're copyrighted, you know, they're published as PDFs and right. you're not supposed to transform. The, the, the real value proposition is if you, you can purchase standards already modeled so that uh, uh, welding, inspection, commissioning, those kinds of things are already in the SpecEx document. And we are actually talking to several standards organizations about uh, publishing in SpecEx. So we do work from it in that respect. Um, but again, when you, when you buy a frozen deliverable document that has copyright restrictions on it, uh, there's a certain set of limitations. So you have to be careful. Okay. And we have another question here. Uh, is there a limit to the number of multi-purpose selections that can be uh, can be put in a template? There is not. I would caution somebody against creating multi-purpose spaghetti. Um, you, you, you probably want to pick a good set that you get value from and not have to touch each and every object. But that being said, no, there is no limit. You can define that via template as you need to. And does SpecWave have any direct integration with BIM modeling tools yet? I mean, we kind of addressed that. Yeah, I think I answered that. Uh, seems like spec spec driven process filtering of the document is almost unfair when communicated specs with other consultants contractors. Is there a plan for this to be implemented for the consumers of spec of a spec document? Example in a packaged application for viewing or in a PDF. Yeah, we are currently working on um, enabling specifications in mobile devices where you'll be able to get uh, just the context kind of going back to the story of the inspector being able to uh, get just what you need as a consumer or on a mobile device 
or if you have a laptop and have access to a desktop application, then it could be um, that much that much richer. Um, so we do, uh, and we also do plan a um, lightweight version of SpecWave under Bentley's upcoming Cloud Connect services, where um, the concepts of uh, redlining comments and exceptions and clarifications are going to be enabled for users who are downstream in a workflow, such as a subcontractor or a third-party inspection agency, and so on. So okay. Okay. Uh, does the system automatically um, generate a submittals register or a list of submittals required by the construction contractor in accordance with the specs? Not purely automatically. You have to do the tagging. Now, we do have um, very vast migration or data import capabilities where there's a lot of things that you can do, such as recognize a certain section. So, for example, if you have a section that's called submittals, and you want everything underneath it at one level of invitation to be automatically tagged as a submittal requirement. And that will give you a reasonably good automated submittal schedule. Yeah, there's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot of tools there. But in order to really enable the spec-driven process, unfortunately, there is a subject matter expert requirement of somebody has to read the paragraph, create objects, and tag them. Um, so there's some degree of, of automation, but in reality and practice, it's a semi-automated, semi-manual process that does require subject matter expertise. So typically, um, a certain discipline lead or the person that's responsible will actually do the tagging, but the real advantage is that multiple users or multiple projects don't have to do the process again and again and again. So it's a little bit of an investment up front, and then you can reap the benefit of that uh, multiple times uh, as the document gets used and reused. Okay. Another question is, how do you see yourself competing with other document management systems? Well, that's that's a project quite question. SpecWave is not a document management system. SpecWave is essentially an object-oriented editor. So, you know, we sort of speak with Word to a certain extent. Um, but uh, how does ProjectWise compete with other document management systems? I think we blow them out of the water. <laughs> Okay, and let's see if we have one more. Also, is collaboration on specs the same way as project-wise, or is this done manually by sending the files and not synced to the network? That's up to you. Like I mentioned, you know, SpecX is essentially a file on disk. So we do respect um, for organizations that use network shares. We do respect um, the Windows permission system so that uh, if a certain document it belongs to the mechanical department, that only a colleague in the mechanical department can edit it and, and, and it's read only to everybody else. We certainly enforce, enforce that. Um, that's why we recommend the use of a document management system such, such as ProjectWise because you got the concept of uh, lock and lock and, and so on. Um, but if you leave two SpecX file, if you have a SpecX file and um, multiple people have read write access to it, whoever hits, hits save last wins. So, it, so it's an advantage, it's a disadvantage. At the end of the day, it's a file on disk for better or for worse. Okay. Uh, what specific disciplines are covered in a SpecWave composer? Building, underground construction, et cetera. It's a completely um, industry independent product. It's really spec modeling is about defining structure and defining tags and workflows. Um, we don't really have any support for any particular um, industry or flavor. That being said, it's sort of the next step. So if you define templates that are specific to AEC, which would typically be CSI master format compliant, then that's a specialization that Spectre supports very well. It's kind of like what I did with the templates, when I showed you one template that was CSI compliant and another basic plant template that has a different structure. So you can actually leverage um, templates for creating uh, constraints on top of what SpecWave can do, and you can make those industry and discipline specific. Okay. Uh, are there aspects of traditional specs that you believe might not be useful for BIM tools when finally the integration between specs and BIM models is achieved? Aspects of traditional specs that, um, I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. 
Let me read it again. Are there aspects of traditional specs, specs that you believe might not be useful for BIM tools when finally the integration between specs and BIM models is achieved? Again, I still don't quite understand the question, but if I'm thinking of of aspects of traditional specs and we think of things that might be in there like tables and graphics and um, other things the text which might not be useful in the model so when, when we do go to connect specs with design tools we'll have to really decide as far as how much the document comes across but once you have the link and if you have a certain requirement in the BIM model and then you can follow the link back to SpecWave and back to the document and then you can see the rest of the narrative, you can see the uh, uh, notes to specify, you can see um, uh, details or graphics, whatever else, so those would probably stay in the document while uh, some text is exposed in the BIM model. Okay. I th that was my interpretation of the question. I'm not sure. Okay. And, and again, those of you, if we're not answering your question, you can write back into us, and Leon and I will get back to you. So, so and if, for those of you who may not get to your answer, your questions before our hour is up, we will do the same. Another question. Has SpecWave Composer been, yeah, let's see. That would be Has SpecWave Composer been approved or accepted by FDOT or any other DOT? So by the Department of Transportation. And the answer to that at this time is no. Okay. So it, it, it's also my experience that specific to the DOTs, it seems like the point of authorship mm -hmm. is typically with the contractors and not the state agencies themselves. Uh, so. I don't know how much value there would be to that, but that's subjective. Okay. Uh, and this person writes, I may have missed it. Could you explain how the system processing data in tables, or how it processes data in tables? Um, we support tables. When you import from Microsoft Word, the tables do come across as tables. You can also multipurpose within tables. You can multipurpose rows and individual cells. So if you have a table and you go to the purpose of uh, uh, North America, then the European specific lines will disappear. Um, so we do support tables uh, fully and completely. And you can also use tagging and multipurposing and spec driven process uh, within the tables. Okay. Uh, can you import CSI specs into SpecWave Composer automatically? Yes. And we do that extremely well because it's a really nice thing in the AEC industry that CSI exists. We've seen specs with all, you know, formatting and structure all over the place. The fact that master format is, is out there. Uh, provide something that's very predictable and expected and our uh, migration or import mechanism can recognize that stuff very well. So um, the, the, the answer there, especially for CSI, is uh, very much of a yes. Okay. And Leon, I've tried to give control back to you, so you might see if, if it's come in. Uh, we, yes. have, we have uh, just a few more minutes left here. Um, I have, there we go, I have uh, one more poll that I We'll try and see. And I guess we don't. Doesn't work that way. Okay. Um, let me just see if there's any more. I think I just saw one more question come in. So. Okay, we have no additional questions. So uh, at this time, we want to thank you all uh, for uh, joining us today. And I want to thank Leon in particular for putting this presentation together. Uh, and uh, as I said, we will be put, putting this entire thing up as a recording on the Fiatech website. Uh, and we hope that you'll be able to join us again for another Technology Tuesday webinar. Leon, do you have any final closing comments? 
I'd like to uh, thank everybody for joining, and uh, thank you, Bob, for uh, putting this together. Okay. Thank you all again.